This is my third guitar build, and before I decided to make it a video, I had already done a couple of steps. So you can see here the top is already thickness. The plates have been joined. So now I'm just cutting out the shape of the top, which is a modified OM. I took a Martin OM, which was basically the shape I built of my first guitar, and uh, changed the design a little bit on the upper belt. I uh, built my second guitar uh, using this shape, and I did a floor team cutaway. Uh, this build will not have the floor team cutaway. If you want to see that build, you can watch that video. I'll put a link in the description. Here I'm just jointing the sides, cutting them to width, and thicknessing them. the bending machine from LMI. It's what I use to bend the sides. Well, it works pretty well. The first guitar build I did, I bent the sides by hand, which was an interesting process. It took a lot longer. So there's the sides bent. Now I'm making the head block and the tail block here. I'm just showing a brief snippet of how I'm uh, getting the head block to match the shape of the form. And then I'm gluing up the tail block and head block here. It's a lot of clamps. Uh, they do kind of weigh down the side, so I tried to use more smaller ones than big ones. In my second guitar build, uh, I used too many big ones and it cracked the side. So now I'm just kind of uh, doing the pre-tapering of the sides, the back side here, basically getting it down to the height of the head block, which I cut to a rough dimension, a little bit more than what the plans called for. To finish off the pre-radiusing, I'm just running them on the radius dish, which is called driving the bus. Here I'm installing kerfing. I've just got some clothespins with some rubber bands wrapped around them to give them a little bit more clamping power. So you can see here the scarf joint's already cut. I'm just truing up the face of the headstock and then cutting the neck to length. The piece that I cut off, the little small piece, will be made into the stacked heel. Here I'm cutting the truss rod slot. I'm using a uh, Stumac hot rod truss rod. You can see that red one there. This is the third guitar I made and it's the third kind of truss rod I've used. I'm just really trying to try out a lot of different things in my first few guitar builds. Here's where I'm gluing the stacked heel together. I took that little short piece that I cut off and cut it into three pieces. So now I've got the back and I'm going to do the same thing I did to the top and the sides. I'm going to joint the side, make sure the seam is good between the two plates, and then uh, glue them up here. I made this plate jointing jig for my first guitar build and it seems to work out pretty well. It uses some wedges, you can see here on the side, and it just kind of clamps the two pieces together. In order to keep the pieces from buckling, like you see there, I just place two planes on top to keep it weighted down. Here's just a shot of the glued together panel showing the joint there. It came out pretty good. And of course, got to cut the shape out of the back. Don't pay any attention to those Mickey Mouse pajama pants I'm wearing. Thank to sing it through the uh, drum sander, which was an excellent addition to the shop. Um, having uh, thicknessed the entire first guitar that I made by hand using scrapers and half of the second guitar build, this drum sander is awesome to have. It cuts out a lot of time. And there you saw me gluing on the back reinforcement strip which just reinforces the joint between the two back plates. And 
this is Sitka spruce and I'm cutting out the pieces for the back braces. I'm just measuring out so that I can cut them each out to length. I'm just comparing them to the, the plans to make sure I cut them to the right length. I'm using the radius dish to radius the bottom of them. Here you notice there was actually an error. I pre-scalloped the braces there. You can see it's already scalloped on the band saw. And then I put the radius on the bottom, which made the ends of those scallops on uh, a couple of the braces too thin, so I had to remake them. And I'm um, just cutting out notches here for the back braces to go onto the back. This is a go bar deck. And the yellow bars are called go bars. They're just stiff pieces of fiberglass. There's a uh, platform up above that you can't see where the go bars press against and um, basically just push against that and then the brace to put pressure onto the braces. Shaping the braces, not too difficult to do on the back. It's still kind of an enigmatic process to me, voicing, more so the top. The back is not really much to it really, but the top is more kind of an enigma to me of what I'm actually doing. I know what I'm doing, but don't know what I'm doing, if you know what I mean. Uh, here I'm just kind of notching out for the back braces to fit into the curves, or the curved linings, I should say. And I've got to cut away some of this back reinforcement strip so that the back will sit flush against the head block and the tail block. That's what I'm doing here. And this is a pretty stressful step. You try to move quickly, but you're trying to be precise at the same time. You've got to get the glue on there. And, you know, once the glue goes down, you're on a time crunch to get the top on there before the glue starts to set up too much. And then making sure that the braces actually fit in there while you're doing the glue up. So to get done with this step is a pretty good feeling to look at it when you get done. This is a resin pin blank and I decided to use it to make a rosette. I made a segmented rosette on my second guitar build out of some paduk wood. Uh, this one I decided to go ahead and try something a little different. I like the design of these. I got these from Crosscut Creations. I'll put a link to his uh, website and YouTube channel in the description box below. But I liked all the different colors and I'm just kind of wiping it down with some mineral spirits here to get an idea of what it's going to look like. And that is just an ebony piece there at the bottom, a black ebony piece. I don't know why, just for accent. So now I'm cutting out the channel to put the rosette in. This is another kind of stressful step. I decided to use epoxy to glue it in because I wasn't sure how woodworking glue would hold the resin down. I seemed to work out okay. I'm using a big Bowflex weight to clamp down on it. I installed some white, black, white purfling all around the edges. You can see there. And here I'm cutting out the sound hole, uh, which is an, yet another stressful step. Uh, there are so many stressful steps in a guitar build, it's insane, but somehow you make it through. I think that's why at the end of the build, it's so much of a fulfilling feeling uh, because you've accomplished something like this where you're, so many steps were so stressful to get done and to be at the end of it just makes you feel so good. Didn't really decide that I needed to show every step of gluing down the soundboard bracing, but there you go. So, quick shot of me shaping the uh, braces. And here it is, already voiced, as good as I know how to do it, okay? On my first guitar build, I had a sticky back printer label that I just wrote on. My second guitar build did not have a label. So I decided to take a piece of scrapbook paper and just write on it. That's my label for this guitar. I used some spray adhesive to glue it down. 
So the back is on and now you got to put the top. So just still another stressful part of the build. Uh, yet at the end of it, it's a really good feeling. I used a piece of leather there to help protect the, the wood from denting. And I'm just using calls all the way around, just random pieces of wood uh, so that the uh, go bars don't press too hard on the one spot. I had a couple of little dents in my first guitar build where I didn't use the calls. And I had a feeling they were from where the go bars were pressing down really hard. Here's a shot of the top and the back flushed up to the sides. Decided to take it outside because the lighting outside is much better than in my shop. Here I'm flattening out the sides to get ready for this step, which is cutting the binding channels. If you don't flatten out the sides before you do it, you'll have undulations in your binding channels if there's any undulations in the side. I know that because I forgot to flatten the sides on my second guitar build and I had those undulations in it. So. I decided to use super glue on this guitar build. Um, I used yellow glue on my first guitar build, super glue on my second guitar build. It's a lot less stressful setting up for a super glue method, but I think that the wood glue, the yellow glue, makes the binding swell a little bit and helps fill in gaps. So I had a, a few gaps that I'll have to fill in and uh, had the same issue on my second guitar build as well. Off camera, I installed a wedge using the same rosette material in the bottom. Well, it's not a wedge, it's just an engraft, uh, but to cover up that joint where the two sides come together in the lower bout. I think it came out okay. It was my first time trying this. And I put some black, white, black purfling around it just to kind of make it stand out a little bit. And that's Koa binding. If I didn't say it before, I got it from Allied Luthery. He had another Luthery supply company I'll put a link to in the description. It looks really good with some mineral spirits on it, as you see here. I made that little 90 degree fence to clamp to my oscillating spindle sander so that I can run my headstock through it to make the uh, volute on the back. I'm gluing on the headstock here and I'm using a couple of veneers and then a thicker headpiece. And this time I actually used a couple of toothpicks to keep everything aligned. You see those toothpicks I have in there and it was so much easier. If you're ever going to glue a headstock on, use the toothpicks or whatever you want to use. Drill two holes that fit two dowels or whatever. It was so much less stress doing it this way. Uh, if you don't use the toothpicks or dowels or whatever you use, the head plate is sliding all over the place and you're trying to keep it in place while you're putting clamps on. It's pretty stressful. There I was flushing up the headstock to the side of the neck and here I'm cutting off where the nut will go at the end of the headstock. You cut almost all the way through down and then you use your chisel to get the rest of it off of there. Definitely don't want to cut into the neck. Uh, you can see me uh, cutting out the shape of the headstock here. I've got the temple on the back and uh, that makes it easy to be able to follow that with the bandsaw. And uh, while the template's on, I do mark for the holes so that I can drill them out. Before drilling them though, I do shape the headstock first using the oscillating spindle sander. And here's the drilling of the tuner holes. That's a piece of uh, ebony on the back strap, and there's actually a piece of maple under that. And on the front here, that's Malaysian black wood, and underneath it are a couple of veneers. Here I'm cutting the neck off at the end of the tenon, and then uh, bringing it to the bandsaw and cutting out the rough taper.
Then I take it over to the mortise and tenon cutting jig and cut a mortise into the top of the guitar body. There you can see the mortise. After that I cut a tenon into the end of the neck that will fit right down into the mortise. like so and after you know fitting it it's pretty tight my first two guitars were really tight like this as well and you can see it's tight enough where I can kind of hold the guitar up by it but it uh, did end up loosening up over time which is no problem it's just I don't know if that's just wood movement but it didn't have that with my first two guitars I just noticed that with this one and before I bolt on the neck I like to check the yaw and the pitch against the body just to make sure everything looks good still. Uh, while I'm checking that I just tied the neck onto the body with a piece of rubber uh, strapping. And you can see I did have to floss the neck a little bit to one side so that would lean one way. And once I was satisfied I went ahead and bolted it on. So here I'm adding the truss rod and uh, I had to cut the access hole for the truss rod. Told you. And I don't know why I decided to do it with the chisel. I just did uh, the first two guitars. They used a router and it was a lot quicker and uh, easier. For some reason I thought this would be faster. It ended up taking me a little while because I was being so careful. I didn't want to accidentally uh, hit the top of the guitar. Honestly I probably should have protected the guitar a little bit but it turned out okay and the truss rod fit right down in there. Then I had to prepare the fretboard and before starting I like to make sure there's a nice square edge uh, to reference from. So that's what you see me doing here, squaring up the edge. And that's a uh, Number five jack plane, low angle jack plane, by the way. Then I referenced that square edge against the miter gauge on my table saw. I cut a clean square front of the fretboard. And then I thickness it to where it needs to be, uh, rough thickness. And then I cut all the frets out. You can see here using this fretting jig. This is the jig from LMI, which at the time of this recording, they just announced recently that they were closing down after 40 years of business. So uh, the two templates I have for this jig, I guess will be the only templates I ever have, unless somebody decides to pick up their jig line and sell it separately, which would be cool. Once the frets are cut, I cut out the uh, the taper on the fretboard and then uh, get it to final thickness. Of course I use that same plane to do it. The plane is uh, really nice to have. You know, I only really use that one and a little block plane. And uh, that's really the only two planes that you really need. I could use a number seven. I think for uh, joining the plates at the beginning of a guitar bill, but really just a number five and a little bot plane is really all I've needed. Now there I cut the end of the fretboard to length, decided to put a little you know, curve in the bottom of it. Had to plan for the thickness of the binding as well, which I added here off camera. I'm just taking off the binding tape. And that binding is uh, Koa binding, and that fretboard is a Malaysian blackwood, just like the the uh, head plate, the fretboard, and the bridge. They were all the same. I use a flush cut saw and just really slowly and carefully cut off the edge of that binding at the top of the fretboard. I haven't had any issues yet doing it that way. 
attached. To attach the fretboard, I drilled three uh, holes, alignment holes, that I put a little drill bit down inside of to uh, place the fretboard so that when I put the glue on, those pin holes will help me to align it onto the neck and it won't shift or anything like that when I glue it. I almost forgot the, the truss rod here. I had to run out and go get it mm -hmm. after I put the glue on the fretboard. So that's why I left the screen and came back. I've heard of people doing that. Of course, this is just my third guitar. I haven't done it yet, but I actually almost did forget to put it in my second guitar and then again in this one. So I'm just dreading the day that I actually do forget to put the truss rod in. This is a piece of ebony. And that's actually the cutoff of the end of the fretboard of my first guitar. I just thought it would be nice to use as a heel cap. And when I put the heel cap on, using these kind of quick clamps, you know, can cause the piece to slide around. And I didn't know it yet, but it actually slid the left side of the heel cap up just a skosh. So later when I'm about to glue the fretboard, to the guitar, I ended up having to floss both sides down a little bit to get that gap out. Now I'm uh, shaping the neck, all of the various sequences there. I decided to use this little drill, drill press planer uh, to get it to closer to thickness. It was a lot easier. Actually, it didn't take nearly as long as doing it by hand. Now I radius the fretboard, kind of help it out a little bit by planing down the edges to the height of the binding and then using a uh, radius block to get the rest of the way down. This is EVO fret wire, gold fret wire, and I bought it months ago. I've just had it enough in my shop to do one guitar worth. And of course, they don't make this anymore. The people who made this fret wire don't have the materials they need to continue making it. I guess wherever it comes from in the world, they've had a lot of difficulty getting it, so they've announced that they don't make it anymore. Those are the side dots I'm putting in. And actually, this material that I'm putting in there came with the parts from my first guitar, so they sent me plenty. So I probably still got enough to do a few more guitars if I decide to do white. Here's just a shot of the finished neck uh, before I glue it on. So I gotta check these angles again like I was mentioning earlier. And you can see here that face is wondering how the measurement there got a millimeter higher than I wanted it to. So. Uh, to get it back down, I ended up flossing the front of the neck a little bit and uh, tried to you know, feather it out and uh, make it sit down flat again. And that was after getting that gap out of the heel cap, so I had to floss again. So it took a little while, but I eventually got it right. And this is kind of a stressful step. you got to get the glue on there, put the neck on, get the bolts in, and then get the clamps on and then get all the glue squeeze out up and hope you didn't miss any. I just use two F-style clamps. Uh, I tape a call to the first one and leave it over to the side long enough, far enough over so that I can fit the second clamp on there. And that call just goes right past the upper transverse bar. It sits on, on the, the patch 
right above it. Get the bridge, like I mentioned, it's Malaysian blackwood. And again, I like to start with a square edge. That's going to be the top of the bridge. There's that little block plane I was talking about. That one and that number five low angle jack plane are all I've used for all three of my guitar builds. Um, like I said, it would be nice to have some more, but you know, one day I'll expand, try something else. That template is the uh, second. I saw on the on the front of it said bridge 2.0. It's just the second bridge template I've made. The first one was just a, a Martin style. So this time, this time uh, you saw this. If you saw my second guitar build, I used the same shape on this one. I just tried to do a little bit more uh, design on this one compared to number two. After cutting it out on the bandsaw, I shaped it on the oscillating spindle sander. And when that was done, I drilled the starter holes, or I guess the holes for the bridge pins. Those holes will eventually get widened out to fit the bridge pins. And you can see that's just a, you know, it's been shaped. Uh, no decoration to it. But, and you can see in this shot, um, uh, I'll put in the radius on the bottom, but you can see I've already radiused the top of the bridge. Here I'm cutting the saddle slot, and then you'll see this shot coming up from the left. And you can see the bottom, I put a little bevel on the bottom just to try to add a, add a decorative touch. And uh, here it is sanded up to like 400. At this point in the build, most of the woodworking is already done, so a lot of this is just finishing up, doing a lot of the final steps. Uh, a lot of the small details of getting the guitar ready to be strung up and played. So here I am filling the grain using a product called Aqua Coat. I use it on my first two guitars as well. And uh, right here I'm drilling out some holes to hold some pins. Well, I used some drill bits as you see there uh, to keep the bridge in place. Uh, this is the first time I tried this, um, but my hope was that uh, when I went to attach the bridge that I'd be able to pin it in place and it wouldn't shift on me. I had that problem during the first two guitar builds where the bridge would move when I'd put glue down and try to clamp it in place. Uh, so masking off for the bridge, of course, you got to draw around the bridge and then you got to cut out tape so that the only spot where the tape's going to be is right underneath the bridge. And you do kind of leave a little bit of space, a gap there, so it doesn't go completely to the edge of the bridge, the tape. It kind of comes up short a little bit so that there's a little bit of finish right under the edge of the bridge once it's applied. At least that's how I understand it. Uh, so here I'm doing the finish. I'm using a true oil finish. Basically, I'm using Eric Schaefer's method. You can find his method if you Google it. I think it's ericschaeferguitars.com. He describes a, a method for applying true oil. It's about 18 coats. And I decided to go ahead and try the Stu Mac buffing compound on this uh, guitar. I did not use this product on the first two guitars. Did something different. You can see here I'm using my drill with a pad on it to apply all the coats. I think that's the first step completed, the medium. Uh, just getting some shots of it. And then after you're done buffing, it's time for the bridge install, which is a pretty hectic part of the process. Getting the tape off first, cleaning it up. You can see I put the drill bits in those pilot holes in order to hold the bridge in place while I clamped it down. And of course the mad panic to get all the glue squeeze out up there. I decided to go ahead and put a emblem in the top of my guitar. 
Uh, it's basically just kind of like a pendant uh, with an M on it. I didn't do anything like this on my first two guitars. I just left the headstock blank. But this time I decided I wanted to put something in there. So uh, this came as a necklace pendant, like I said. I ground off the part where you attach it to the necklace. And I uh, decided I was going to try to use super glue on this. And you can see how, how bad it went. Exactly what I didn't want to happen happened. That's no good. Pretty frustrating. I went ahead and sanded it off and uh, ended up refinishing it later after doing some of the fret work like you see me doing here. I used a sequence of sandpaper grits to polish all the frets. I think I went up to 1,000 or 2,000 grit. I think. Here I am making the nut, which takes takes a while. I ended up using my disc sander to get it most of the way down, and then just did a little bit of hand sanding to fit it there. And you can see how I refinished uh, the top of the headstock. And then making the saddle took even longer than the nut because it's so thin, and I'm trying to hand sand it, I'm trying to hold it up against the sandpaper is difficult when it's so thin like that. You can see here I got the saddle installed and shaped to the radius of the fretboard. Uh, now I've got to notch the nut to accept the strings. And later on I do end up lowering the action at that nut to the proper height during the setup of the guitar right before I start playing it. Drilling out the holes for the bridge pins, uh, not too difficult to do, just drill straight down and then I have a three degree taper uh, because the bridge pins I use are three degree. There's also five degree, which I've not used yet, but I don't have a taper for five degree bridge pins, so I've been using just three degree. So now it's time to put the tuners in. Really nothing much to it, just put them in there, make sure they're straight, put the nut on the top, and then uh, off camera I put a screw in the back uh, in the screw hole to keep those attached. Now stringing it up. After I get done stringing it up I do do a full uh, setup. But I did that off camera, so you wouldn't have to watch all the boring parts. Now I'm getting ready to play it, so here's how it sounds. Thank you for watching all of the parts. If you did, please uh, subscribe, and uh, I've got more guitar builds coming up in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.